Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. We thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for another day. Thank God for his grace and his mercy. I thank God for this opportunity to be able to encourage my sisters and brothers in Christ for our youth convention 2021. I'm just grateful just for being in the house of prayer one more time. I'm grateful that I'm saved. I'm grateful that I have the Holy Ghost. And I thank God for this wonderful, wonderful ministry, giving glory and honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to my bishop, Bishop Walter Ori, in his absence, to Pastor Ori, Pastor Violet Ori, our missionaries, mothers, deacons, children, everybody here in their respectable places. I'm just grateful to be here. I'm always excited when I come to church because this is my happy place, y'all. <laughs> this is my happy place. This is where I get joy. My job is so stressful, but I thank God, hallelujah, just for this opportunity. And I was tasked with the, I was given the task to encourage you all on today for our Youth 2021 Convention. And our theme this year is I Am Victorious. Hallelujah. Come on and give God a hand of praise because we are victorious. Hallelujah. And I'm grateful because the, the original angle that I had, uh, the Lord changed my mind or he, he changed what he wanted. And all week, well, you know, we came off of this fast and all week when I was waking up, I was hearing the song, we're fighting a fixed fight and we've already won. I'm like, okay, I like that song, but this is what I wanted to do. And the Lord just kept letting me know that we're fighting a fixed fight. And we've already won. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I like to think of my life. This, this is just me. I like to think of my life as a timeline. I don't know if, if any of you um, are math teachers or if you've ever done math, but there's a certain type of math when you're doing, dealing with negative and positive numbers. It's on a timeline. So when you're coming from this way, the numbers are negative and it comes closer to a zero. And then once you get to zero, the numbers this way, it, all, it goes all positive. And of course, numbers are ever ending. They, they don't ever end. And so when, when the Lord tells me things or when he ministers certain things to me, I look at it as being on a timeline, an existing timeline. And so even though I may be at number two, when I get to step number 10, whatever the Lord has promised me, whatever he told me to do, when I get to 10, it's already there. It's already done. I just have to get there. So we're fighting a fixed fight, and we've already won. Amen? Amen. So victorious means having won a victory or being triumphant. Victory is an act of defeating an enemy or opponent in a battle, game, or other competition. Now, we know that sometimes um, the enemy, he, he, does, he tries to play games with our minds sometimes. And he tries to tell us things that, that's contrary to the word of God. But we're fighting a fixed fight. And we've already won that fight. So no matter what the enemy tries to throw in our minds, what he tries to throw in our lives, what he might throw in our, throw in our pathway, we've already won that battle. It's already done. We just have to remember. And I know we hear it all the time. And sometimes, especially with me, I can't speak for anybody else, but with growing up in church, a lot of things I've heard over and over and over again. And so it's like you hear it and you get comfortable with it. And sometimes when, when the Lord is dealing with you in a certain way, it just, it hits different. Like you can hear the same thing, but it, it, it comes a little bit different and you get a newer, resol a, a newer revelation about what it is that he's saying. And so in terms of fighting a fixed fight, when a fight is fixed, there is someone that's already designated to win and there is someone that's already assigned to lose. So a lot of times when, when people are, are betting, they're, they're betting against someone. They'll tell this person, look, like we, you, you're going to win this fight, and they're going to talk to the opponent and tell them you're going to lose this fight. The enemy, is, he's already designated to lose this fight. He's already designated. The, the word of God lets us know that he's a defeated foe. So we're fighting against somebody that's already defeated. We just have to keep moving forward. And we just have to keep our faith so that when we get to wherever we're going, yeah, it might hurt a little bit. It might sting a little bit. But it's okay. We might take a few, take a few hits, take a few licks, but it's all right because we're fighting a fixed fight. And we've already 
won. So once we get that in our spirit, once we get that in our mind that we've already won, yeah, we might cry a little bit of the way, but it's okay. We might suffer some losses, but it's still okay because when we lose in Christ, it's actually a gain when we lose in Christ. And that's the good thing about being a believer, that we don't lose. It might look like we're losing to the world, but when we come, when we, when we come to Christ, We're winning. We've already made a winning decision. We are victorious. I am victorious. We're fighting a fixed fight, and we've already won. Hallelujah. So the scripture that I'm coming from on today is Exodus chapter 17, 1 through 15. Um, I am going to read the entire thing so that I can kind of give you an idea of what was happening during this time. At the Lord's command, the whole community of Israel left the wilderness of sin. Amen. We got to make a choice to leave sin. That's that's a choice right there. And moved from place to place. Eventually, they camped at Rephidim, but there was no water there for the people to drink. So once more, the people complained against Moses. Give us water to drink, they demanded. Give us water to drink. God is living water. And sometimes we do have to demand, God, I'm dry in this area. I need you to give me living water to drink. Give me your spirit so that I can make it through this thing, so that I can go through the way that you want me to go through. Because we can go through a situation. If we fail, we got to go through again. And it's to develop us, and it's to grow us up, and it's to mature us in certain areas. So, Lord God, give me your living water to drink so that I can go through this. I can do this the way that you have called me to do this. I am victorious. So I want to do this the way that you have called me to do this. Help me to get it right. And if I don't get it right this time, Lord God, show me what I didn't do right the last time so I can get it right the first time, get it right the next time. Amen? Amen. Quiet, Moses replied. Why are you complaining against me? And why are you testing the Lord? But tormented by thirst, they continued to argue with Moses. Why did you bring us out of Egypt? Are you trying to kill us, our children, and our livestock with thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, what should I do with these people? (laughs) Y'all, I'm trying to get to this text. (laughs) And a lot of times when we're going through, you you do ask, Lord, what am I supposed to do with this person? What am I supposed to do with this situation? How do I move forward? But Moses had the right attitude because he went to God. He went to God for the answer because he knew that that's where his resolution was. This text is giving us strategy on how to be victorious because we're fighting a fixed fight and we have already won that fight. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, they are ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, walk out in front of the people. Take your staff, the one you used when you struck the water of the Nile, and call some of the elders of Israel to join you. Hallelujah. We got some praying elders in House of God Miracle Temple. Hallelujah. We got some some praying elders, hallelujah, that has the power of God, that has the anointing of God, that can get a prayer through, that can help us to be victorious, that can help us to get through this situation, whatever that challenge is, we got some praying elders. Thank God for the praying elders of House of God Miracle Temple. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So, Um, So the Lord said to Moses, walk out in front of the people, take your staff, the one you use when you struck the water of the Nile, and call some of the elders of Israel to join you. I will stand before you on the rock at Mount Sinai. Strike the rock and the water will come gushing out. When the people will be able, then the people will be able to drink. So Moses struck the rock as he was told, and water gushed out as elders looked on. Moses followed God's, God's instructions. He, he followed what God told him. And so it's when we follow the word of God that we know that we're going to be victorious. We can't do, you can't just do what you want to do. 
We got to be obedient to the word of God. And that's the part where our flesh has to die daily. There's certain parts of us that needs to die daily so that we can follow the word of God because our flesh does not want to serve God. But when your spirit is in control, when your spirit man is in control, you're able to tell your flesh, flesh, yeah, I might be a little tired today. Yeah, I might be a little sick today. I might have a little headache today, but I'm going to pray. I'm going to focus. Yeah, that phone might keep ringing, but I'm going to keep focusing. I'm going to keep reading the word of God, and I'm going to keep studying the word of God because I am going to be victorious. I'm fighting a fixed fight, and I've already won. Moses named the place Massah, which means test, and Meribah, which means arguing, because the people of Israel argued with Moses and tested the Lord, saying, is the Lord here with us or not? I've been through some things where I ask the Lord, Lord, you, 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 I feel like you're trying to kill me. I think you're trying to kill me, Jesus. I think you're really trying to kill me. I didn't mean it, but I, that's how I felt. I'm like, what? Like, God, you, what? Why? Can, can we take a different way? Can we take a different path? I mean, I, I see where you're trying to get me. I appreciate it, Lord. But can you, can we try, try this a different way? And sometimes that's the part where we have to be mature enough to say, Lord, I trust you. Yes, this hurts. Yes, this stings. Yes, it keeps me up at night. But Lord God, I trust you because this way, if God could have taken us another way, he would have. But he takes us through the path that's going to make a difference. And he takes us through the path that's going to be best for us so that we will learn and we will glorify him as we go through. Hallelujah. While the people of Israel were still at Rephidim, the warriors of Amalek attacked them. Moses commanded Joshua, come Choose some men to go out and fight the army of Amalek for us tomorrow. So during this time, the people of Israel, they were a newly, um, a newly established community. And so the enemy tries to attack them as basically their babies because they didn't have any strategies. They didn't have any, they, they never fought a war. And so a lot, that let me know that the enemy will attack children because he does not play fair. Sometimes, sometimes things happen to children that should never happen. Or sometimes children go through things that they should never have to go through. But the enemy does not play fair. But when God is with us, hallelujah, it doesn't matter what we experienced as children. It doesn't matter what we experienced as adults because sometimes things happen to us as adults that God never ordained. But God is able to get us through because his plan is for us to be victorious. We're fighting a fixed fight and we have already won. While the people of Israel were sitting at Rephidim, the warriors of Amalek attacked them. Moses commanded Joshua, choose some men to go out and fight the army of Amalek for us. Tomorrow I will stand at the top of the hill holding the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses commanded and fought the army of Amalek. Meanwhile, Moses, Aaron, and Hur climbed the top of the hill nearby. As long as Moses held up his staff in his hand, the Israelites had the advantage. But whenever he dropped his hand, the Amalek, the Amalekites gained the advantage. And so this, this right here ministered to me in terms of friendship. What kind of friends do you have? around you. Because as long as Moses' hand was up, they won the fight. But any, I don't care who you are, anybody, you, you, as long as you, when your hand is up this long, it, it hurts. It starts hurting. It gets tiresome. And so Moses got to a place where he just couldn't do it, but he had some good friends. Hallelujah. Because they saw what he saw. They saw the vision that God had for Moses. And so because they were in alignment with the vision that God had for Moses, they were able to hold his hand up. They got a rock for him. It says that they got a rock so they could sit him down. So they did what they could do to make him comfortable. They couldn't lift their hands up for him, but they held his hand up for him because they, this is my friend. This, I'm my friend, when anytime my friend has their hands lifted, my friend is winning. And sometimes we have to think about our friend. It can't always be about us winning. But if I can do what I can do to help Sister Ori win, if I can do what I can do to help Sister Gloria win, if I can do what I can do to help Sherry win, I'm going to do it because I'm a 
in alignment with what God has in plan for their lives. So when we can lift up the hands of our friends, and when you have good friends that can see the vision of Christ, it makes it easier for you to follow Christ because you're doing what, you, what God has called you to do, and you have somebody to hold you accountable. Amen? Hallelujah. You can't be the smartest one in your group now. If you're the smartest one in the group, who do you seek for counsel? Everybody needs somebody to seek counsel from. So whether you're a teenager, whether you're older, we all need somebody to seek counsel from because we need somebody to hold us accountable. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Moses' arms soon became so tired he could no longer hold them up. So Aaron and Hur found a stone for him to sit on. Then they stood on each, on, on each side of Moses, holding up his hands. So his hands were already still until sun, his hands held steady until sunset. So his friends had some tenacity. His friends were not weak because they held his hands up until sunset. So we just have to make sure that when we, when we pick our friends and when we, when we build friendships with somebody, it's something that it needs to be something that's going to lead you closer to Christ, not pull you away from God. So you need some people that strengthen in those areas where you're weak until you're able to get to those areas where you're able to be strengthened. So as a result, Joshua overwhelmed the army of Amalek. After the victory, the Lord instructed Moses, write this down on a scroll as a permanent reminder and read it out loud to Joshua. I will erase the memory of Amalek from under the heaven. Moses built an altar and named it Yahweh Nisi, which means the Lord is my banner. Come on and give God for being my banner on today. Hallelujah. So I have a few more moments. So how do we win spiritual battles? I have three points for you on today. The first step is to accept Christ in your life. You can't win spiritual battles without Christ. Some people are able to be successful in certain areas, but they cannot win a spiritual battle without Christ. Because a spiritual battle is something that you can't see. So in order for you to, to fight a spiritual battle, you have to have the spirit of the living God within you, because otherwise you're going to lose. There are some people that's possessed with the enemy. They have the spirit of the enemy within them, and they, they choose to operate in that spirit. And so when you choose to operate in that spirit, you will die. That's, that's not a matter of question. It's not an if. It's not, well, maybe I can live for the, for the devil. No, you can't, because you will surely die. That's what the word of God says. You will surely die. So we have to choose to live for Christ. God, I always say God is such a gentleman. He's such a gentleman. I remember I was, um, I was going through some things and for about a week straight, the Lord would knock on my room door. And at first I thought it, I thought it was Taylor and I would come in. And so you know, I just, I went back to sleep the next day, and it was such a, such a gentle knock, y'all. <laughs> it was like, and I think probably like the second or the third morning is when it really resonated me that it was the Lord asking me if he can come in so that we can fellowship. And that was just one of those things that just made me fall in love with Jesus because it just showed me how much of a gentleman he was and how much he loves me and how much he's not going to force himself on anybody. He says that it's, it's my hope that none perish. So that means that he loves all of us and he doesn't want any of us to perish, but we have to make a choice. We have to choose. Choose you this day who you're going to serve. Either you're going to serve God or you're going to serve the devil, but you can't do both. You can't do both. We have to make a decision. Of course, when we're growing in Christ, there are certain things that the Lord has to deliver us from. And so, but your mindset should be, I'm going to serve God. Amen. Amen. So you have to accept Christ in your life because he is your advocate. An advocate is someone who publicly supports or recommends a particular cause. Jesus Christ recommends kingdom policies, which is his word. So there's rules and there's laws and there's things in the word of God from the front to the back that tells us how to live. So having 
cho having chosen Jesus as your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's your first step because he's there to advocate on your behalf. He's there to help you and to help you to make those decisions that helps you to live for Christ. Step number two, believe his word and learn it. So we just had a Bible study a couple weeks ago talking about ways of, of how to learn the word of God, meditating on the word day and night, choosing a scripture, one that you don't understand, digging, getting definitions, figuring out what does this thing mean and allowing the Lord to minister to your mind what that particular scripture means. And we have to believe his word. Believing his word is knowing that it exists. But we also have to believe in his word. Isn't that right, Elder Johnson? <laughs> we have to believe in his word. So believing in his word is knowing that it exists and it is able to perform what it says for you. Amen. So this used to be a struggle for me because I used to say, well, I know that God can perform miracles, but is he going to do it for me? And so... I struggled with that until maybe I would say maybe like a couple months ago. And I said, well, you know what? It's in the word of God. The word of God is for me. And I'm going to believe God until he tells me no. Because I understand that there are some things that, that he may not have for me that I may desire. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe him until he tells me no. And so I, I think I shared this testimony in Bible study um, when a, a pastor came and he was saying, in 72 hours, your situation is going to change. Oh, come on and give gold. Y'all, I ran out of my shoe. <laughs> I ran out of my shoe because I was like, yes. 72 hours. I can do this another 72 hours. And when I woke up the very next morning, the Lord said, that wasn't for you. <laughs> but hold up, Jesus, because you, you had told everybody that the 72 hours, like, why that 72 hours say for me? <laughs> and so I still had to grow. I still had to mature. So sometimes... Even, the word, even though the word is coming from somebody who trusts and believes God, for some people it may be true, and for you it may not be. But until the Lord tells you no, you believe that the answer is yes and amen, because he has the best in mind for us. So whatever you're believing and whatever you're trusting God for, if he hasn't told you no yet, you keep believing God that it's yes and it's already done. Because we might be at point two on this timeline, but when we get to point 10 or we get to point 15 or if we got to wait till we get to point 100, it's already done because we're fighting a fixed fight and we've already won. Amen? So, Numbers 23 and 19, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. And so, I know oftentimes when we talk about repenting, um, it's, it's, it means that you've changed your mind about a certain thing. You've changed your lifestyle about a certain thing. So, when, we, when, when the word of God tells us to repent, it's for us to, to change your mind about the, the decisions that you're making that's contrary to the word of God. In this particular scripture, it means that God does not change his, he doesn't change his ways. So, he doesn't, he doesn't lie. He, so, because he can't lie, that means that he can't sin against me. And because he can't sin against me, whatever he says, it has to come to pass. It must come to pass. His word cannot return void. So whatever it is that he told me, I am holding on to. And sometimes even your family members can come and tell you things that's contrary to the word of God. If God himself did not confirm to me that the answer is no, I am believing that the answer is yes. I don't care who says it. We have to hold on to the word of God and we have to build our own relationship with God because whatever it is that he's telling me, he cannot lie. He cannot. It's, it's not like he, he sometimes does or he kind of does or he tells the white lie. He can't. And so because we have that assurance and we know that he cannot lie, when he says something, it's going to come to pass. We just have to keep trucking along that little timeline so that we can get there. Hallelujah. Has he said it and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken it and has he shall not make it good? God can make some 
some bad things good in our life with just his word. Hallelujah. Your situation might not change, but he might give you a peace about that situation, being able to go through that situation peacefully with the grace of God for you to be able to go through. Learning the word of God is how we fight against the enemy. 2 Timothy 2 and 15, it says, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. We don't have to be ashamed because we know the word of God. That actually gives us our power. That gives us our strength to be able to continue to go through rightly dividing the word of God. Sometimes people can, people can mix up the word of God. They can mix up the word of God. They, they have, <laughs> people just combine stuff. No, you, you can't combine the word of God. Like, this, <laughs> this, this isn't a salad. Like, you, <laughs> you, you can't just... <laughs> You have to stick to what the Word of God is saying. You have to rightly divide the Word of God so that when you get it in you, you're fighting with the right tools. It's just like what they said, you can't show up to a, um, to a gunfight with a knife. When you're not rightly dividing the Word of God, you're showing up to a gunfight with a knife because that's not the tool that you needed. Amen. We have to know the Word of God and what it's saying. We can't make up scriptures because we don't know it or for it to fit into our lives how we want it to fit. Amen. And the, my third step is to accept the Holy Ghost in your life. That's how you are going to get the power. Having the Holy Ghost in your life makes all the difference in how we battle and how we develop warfare strategies. It is after you receive the Holy Ghost, you shall receive power. Acts 1 and 8 says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit is upon you, and you shall be a witness unto me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Trying to fight a battle without the Holy Ghost is like trying to win a war with no weapon. I have never heard of a battle or a war being won without a weapon. If anybody want to tell me, I'll wait. <laughs> because you have to have tools. You have to have a battle weapon to fight a battle. You cannot fight a battle with power and anointing without the Holy Ghost. If you don't have it, you have to ask him, Lord, come into my life. I need your Holy Spirit into my life because the enemy is not playing. He does not play fair. He does, when he hits, he doesn't just... He's trying to take you out any chance he gets. So in order for us to be able to stand against the enemy, we need the power of the Holy Ghost. I remember when I had I'd gotten saved, um, I got saved when I was about 18. And um, I think I was probably really like in my 20s when I received the Holy Spirit. And the Lord had just already been dealing with me. And I was like, I need the Holy Spirit because if I don't have the Holy Spirit, I'm not going to be able to, I'm not going to be able to, to stand. I'm not going to be able to win this thing. And so we, in House of God, Miracle Temple, we always tease and we always say, you got to get on that altar and call Jesus. And you got to call him fast. Somebody's spitting on you. But that's not how I got the Holy Spirit. I, I was over here in the corner and um, singing on the choir, doing, doing what I do. And Sister Gloria came and laid hands on me. And I don't remember falling. I just knew I was there. And the Holy Spirit came upon me. And I was speaking in tongues. And it was a feeling that I've never felt before. And so that let me know that even though you may not be here at the altar, if you want the Holy Ghost in your life, he can meet you wherever. He met me right here. <laughs> Right down there. And not to say that my life was perfect after that because um, Taylor is 18 and I've been married 12 years. Amen. But thank God. <laughs> thank God that he loved me through it anyway. Hallelujah. You could win. You, you could not possibly win a fight without weapons. You could possibly win if you hide, but you cannot win the entire war unless you have weapons that has been given to you by the Holy Ghost, working in you, giving you strategies, developing you, and strengthening you. And my last scripture is Luke 10 and 19. Behold, 
I give you the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Yeah, your feelings might be a little hurt. But it's not going to be enough to make you turn around and change your mind about serving God. It's not going to be enough to make you change your mind to say, this, no, God, this ain't for me. If anything else, when you get the Holy Ghost and you're going through changes and you're going through things, it brings you closer to God. I'm going to holler just a little bit louder. I'm going to sing just a little bit harder because I know that I have the Holy Ghost living inside of me. Do you mean to tell me that I am stronger than the enemy? Yes, I am with the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, who holds all power in his hand, and because he is living inside of me, I am victorious. We're fighting a fixed fight, and we've already won. Pray my strength in the Lord. Let's go one more time. Hey, Lord is high above the heavens. Lord.